You're here, Corley's last round, episode two with my friend Kevin Ross. Uh, we're just talking straight talk. You know, I don't even give him a heads up of what we're going to talk <laughs> about. He has no idea. I don't even know, but I'm going to go right here. Kevin's coming off a uh, WMC title down in Peru. Uh, I'm just telling him, man, I think that belt is like the best looking belt in Muay Thai. It's freaking awesome. But uh, one of the things I want to talk about that it has to do with, I think, the Muay Thai lifestyle is um, when you took that fight, you really didn't know anything about your opponent. There wasn't any really video or footage out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure throughout your career, that happens quite a bit. And I think a lot of people don't understand in Muay Thai, that's just how it is. You just take, I remember when yeah. I first knew you, when you were in Thailand, and I was out there that, you know, they, they put you in a fight in Pattaya and you didn't even know who the guy was until you got there. Then afterwards you find out the dudes that got, you know, tons of fights in France. Oh, that was in, uh, well, yeah, him, but I also went over to uh, Cambodia and fought a guy. Had 300 fights. Kind of come to find out they did some National Geographic special on him because my friend hit me up he's like hey i saw that guy on uh, national geographic and then i went and looked him up i'm like geez man yeah. like 300 something fights a weight class heavier than me i'm like no wonder they were so upset when i beat him yeah but back to what i was saying like the the guy you fought in uh peru uh -huh. you didn't you didn't get any <clears throat> Uh, really, I don't think there was anything out there on him. Really. No, not really. And you know, for me, I don't really like to study too much uh, about my opponents, you know, from coming up that way, you know, like never being able to see who you're fighting. I mean, when we can't, we're coming up, it, you just show up and hope you have a fight and you never know and yeah. fight any weight class, anybody. So it was, it was kind of one of those things you just, you just got to figure it out on the spot. You know, I think a lot of times we try to overanalyze things ahead of time and, and that can mess you up because things might go a completely different way when you're in there. They're always going to be different once you're in there than when you're watching it. So sometimes it's nice just to get a good idea of how somebody moves, what they like to do. Um, but for me personally, I don't really like to study people that much. And uh, I leave that to my coaches if there is film and yeah. stuff they can watch, but I don't, I don't like to think about it. I just want to go in there and, and, and do what I do. Yeah. It's kind of like a, a quick glance. Are they fighting like a traditional Thai style? Are they kind yeah. of bouncing around? That's really all like to me, I think if you're in shape, you do your training camp, right? You eat right. You do everything right. Yeah, you should, you should be ready to go because you need to be ready for everything regardless. I mean, they might not fight that way against you. They've never fought you anyway. So you could see them having all these fights, knocking all these people out, and you might get this notion in your head that they're a certain way, better or worse, and then you go in there and, it, and it's completely different. Yeah. You know, it's like watching somebody's highlight video. You're like, of course they look great. <laughs> yeah. It's their highlight <laughs> video. You know, I want to see what this person does when they get knocked out, when they get hurt. You know, when they're doing well, when they're not doing well. There, there's so many variables in there that just a, a fight or two or a, anything like that, it's only going to give you so much. So if you overanalyze it, it, it could end up hurting you than helping you. So, social media <laughs> taking over. The Instagram Muay Thai, you know, the 15 second clips, guys are dropping. Like, I'm doing pads with my students, I don't even know it. They have cameras hidden on shelves and stuff <laughs> like that, and I didn't even know it. And then all of a sudden, I'm tagged on Instagram in this pad session. Kevin, I know, you know, he probably is not his phone that's setting up there when he has videos up there. I know, <laughs> it, I know Kirian has a gym to run and it's, you know, it's business and it helps, you know, push the sport and pushes a gym. And that's, that's awesome. But I think some people get what we were talking about at breakfast is that some people get the, the thing that what you see in that 15 seconds, oh, yeah, Kevin's doing burnouts on the pads. That's how they do their pad work and all yeah. that. But really, that's just a piece of the day. Yeah. You know, it's a small piece. Uh, you know, there's only 15 seconds. You're seeing sometimes traditional pad work. Sometimes you're seeing bag burnouts. Sometimes you're seeing, you know, fast hand drills where mm -hmm. like, you know, tell the people this <laughs> is not, this is just. It, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It can be good and bad. It's a tool. For people, yeah, obviously it's good to help promote a gym, but promote yourself as well. Yeah. Um, but it becomes something to where that's what people are looking to do as opposed to what really matters, the, the, how you perform in a fight, how, 
are you getting better? You know, what you're really doing. It's like, how do I look? Uh, did you get the right shot of me? You know, let me, let me redo this, you know. And it just becomes such a, such a thing that people focus on instead of what they should be doing, which is train. go in there, put your head down, train, do the work, and the results should speak for themselves. You know, right. it's great to get some things out there and be out there in the world and people can see you, but people just want to be famous now and they, they just want a fast road to the top, but they're not going to get anywhere. You know, it's, it's, it's just a stupid social media thing, you yeah. know, and, and it, it has its good and bad qualities to it, you know, and unfortunately there's probably more bad than there is good, mm. you know, when it comes to that. So, uh, yeah, I don't really like to see it. And I, I mean, I don't really like to be videotaped either, even when no. Kieran does it and I'm like, <laughs> ah, okay. But I know that people love to see it, yeah, you know, and it's is. good, it's good for people to see. And it's, especially when you are actually doing something, um, uh, that you do that people can aspire to yeah. um, as opposed to just throwing out garbage. So again, it's, it's, it's good and bad. And, and I've, I've mixed feelings and emotions about it, but I think there's way too many people that are focused on putting things out online as opposed to getting the work done. Yeah, agreed. So staying on that online topic, there's been a lot of people in, you know, the Muay Thai world, they're all getting, there's a lot of these like Muay Thai pro, Muay Thai athlete, Muay Thai, all these gurus now popping up and I don't know who they are and I'm not to say that I know everything about Muay Thai but usually everybody knows who they are like you know because yeah. the fighting circle is so small I don't know who these people are and they're doing fight analysts you know they're breaking down fights they're giving technique videos and mm -hmm. to me the ties are so humble and stuff. that's not in their thing to do all that you know but yeah who are these people why are they doing it and do you think it's good or bad for the sport to me i think you know it's it's creating awareness of course but the, i mean some of these videos are yeah are horrible and you were talking earlier off camera about you know you've had to reach out to somebody before <laughs> yeah yeah you know it is it is good that it does raise awareness but that is pretty much the only good part about it. You know, yeah. it's great that people are talking about Muay Thai or showing Muay Thai, but if you're not showing it for what it should be or how it is, like basically you're showing people that have never done it, like this is what we should be doing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and I don't think that a lot of people think about that. You know, they get taught something, they're like, I'm gonna pass this on to this person, but they've never actually seen if that works or not. You know, mm -hmm. they've never done it in a fight or even in like hard sparring or anything like right. that. So the level keeps getting dropped down lower and lower and lower and lower because so few people ever get like checked on that kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, I, I there, there's part of me that just wants to like, call out everybody like this is bad this is bad this is bad but but who am i to like say like go around just like no. trying to critique the world you know um you know because everybody's trying their best just like i am but yeah there's been an occasion or two when i saw something that was just so bad i couldn't even keep my mouth shut so <laughs> i i very politely and respectfully private message this person you know you'll see sometimes people go on and like put them on blast right on their page which i don't think i don't think is helpful no. anyway because that person's immediately going to defend themselves they're going to have people on their side or not on their side and then it becomes like this thing it shouldn't be you know it's like mm. if you're really interested in uh, educating this person that might not have learned the correct way like like teach them teach it to them you know don't mm. don't just put them on blast and be like you're an idiot you know, because that's not going to help. They're still going to go and do it, you know, <laughs> it, or, or do it even worse now. So if you can, like, find a way to teach people correctly, um, particularly the ones that learned incorrectly, because there's so much bad knowledge out there, yeah. you know, and oh, you yeah. got to understand that, that the majority of the stuff out there isn't very good. OK, so what's our ultimate goal is, is to help these people, not not show that hey i'm better than you i'm right. gonna tell you what you're doing is wrong like that doesn't help anybody out so finding a way to educate people correctly uh, and particularly the ones who are passing on not the best type of knowledge um is really the best way to go about doing it so you know there's in brazilian jiu-jitsu you know like they got these websites and things like bullshito.com like all these things where it's like the brazilian jiu-jitsu community comes together when there's a fraud when there's a guy that's not a real black belt, a guy that's a, uh, a purple belt, but he, you know, he was a blue belt over at this other school. So they're like called out, they're put on blast. And all the jujitsu people, they come together. In Muay Thai, I never thought that this sport would come to the point where there'd be like people that are, you know, fakes or crazies. Because the sport is so hard. It's yeah. a hard sport. I mean, elbows, knees, kick punches. And now there's people out there like that. And 
Muay Thai is, is, has so many like groups and factions and yeah. all this stuff. You know, they have the TBA people. You got the, you know, I'm, I'm a crew under this person. I can't go and do your seminars and all that <laughs> stuff. You know, I just, you know, I never thought to this day that this would be like that. But yeah, is wh what do we do? Do we? I mean, I do we? We can't call it. There can't be a Muay Thai police. Yeah, but. Right, so it, this it, sport got to be protected. It's, it's so tough, hard man. and beautiful. I just I can't have like some dude wearing freaking leggings and a freaking mon call <laughs> teaching class. <laughs> That's not right, man. Yeah. Somebody's <laughs> got to call him out on it. Man. Well, again, there the, it's hard to say what's the right thing to do. Like how to how to make things better. Like of course you want to just put these people on blast and be like, this guy's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about, but. I think with all things, not just Muay like education is, is the key to helping things grow. So by putting out good information, good teaching, good instructing, and, and kind of steering people in the right way is the best way to go about it. You know, I think once in a while it, you got to put people on blast to kind of get the yeah. stress out <laughs> yeah, or else well, you go I think, crazy. Uh, I think uh, a lot of stuff is the proof is in the pudding, you know? If, yeah, if correct. You're, if you're a coach and you're giving technique videos and you got no Muay Thai fighters and you got nothing and you're like in some basement in New yeah. Jersey, man, what? How? Why am I? How am I to believe that your techniques work? How do yeah. I believe? Because you don't. There's no product. Well, that's what I, I try to tell people when I when I teach teach seminars or teach anywhere is, I'm never gonna tell somebody something they learned is wrong. Uh, what I am going to say is I would never do it. This is yeah. why I would never do it. This is probably what's going to happen to you if you do it in a real situation. Well, I'm not going to be like your coach is an idiot. Don't train no. with him. But look at your coach. Who, is it, who have they produced? And, and that's not even to say just because they haven't produced anyone, uh, they can't be good. Just because they've never fought before, they can't be good. Because there's plenty of coaches who have, haven't fought or haven't reached a high level who are really great instructors. So yeah. you can't exactly say if they've done this, they will be good. And the same goes for great fighters. Some great fighters are awful, awful oh, instructors. Yeah. Way worse than people that don't know what they're talking about. So it's not, there's not one way to do it, but you do need to look at well, um, how, the, well, the proof is in the pudding, like you say. What, what, have, what have they produced? How are they producing? How do their students look? Take a look around at what else is out there. Take a look at, around at high-level guys, high-level um, um, instructors in, in schools, mm -hmm. and kind of compare yourself to them or see, like, is this, are we doing the right thing? And again, it's hard to say what's right and what's wrong yeah, because I think you can't. to me, is you know, you watch Muay Thai. You watch Stadium Muay Thai. Yeah. And no, I'm not saying that a coach is a bad coach because he doesn't produce fighters, but I'm saying look at the students, look what they're doing. Does that look like Muay Thai? Does yeah. it look like, because to me, there's Muay Thai, the ring Muay Thai. Yeah. When people call me the gym and they're asking for, you know, this Muay Baran self-defense, da, 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 I'm like, man, Muay Thai is self-defense. Uh -huh. it's, 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 you know, it's the national sport of Thailand, but I mean, that's real Muay Thai, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, you can right from the get go when you you know you go to a to go to a school to teach, and you can tell right away if they're being instructed the right way because it all it all goes down to do they have the basic knowledge of standing correctly, throwing basic kicks, throwing basic punches, or are they learning all this fancy stuff from other styles or all these combinations and things like that, and they have no no basic knowledge of what to do you know like if you don't have that bas basic fundamentals you know i think uh i don't remember who it was samart or somebody said if, if it looks pretty it's not muay thai which is all what i love because it's not supposed to look pretty it's supposed to be effective and work that's the difference between like movie fights and real fights mm -hmm. real fights aren't pretty like that i mean they are if you know what you're looking at and in, in, in the beauty of it and the technique of it but they're not f super flashy and guys flying around and yeah. doing all these crazy things you know it's 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 a brutal hard sport and that's what it should be and, that, and that's what works and is effective right on all right let's go to personal kevin <laughs> i'm going into his his realm here kevin no some basics basics here um you're fighting in octagon which is a or yeah it's octagon or it's a half it's a hybrid show of bellator and kickboxing so it's under kickboxing rules yeah kickboxing rules you don't know your opponent yet though no i think uh next month they're gonna start figuring that out 
Well, that'll be pretty cool. How about chain, when you're training for, you've done Muay Thai now for probably your last, I don't know how many fights, but. A, a lot. Is it, <laughs> how do you train different with the, the kickboxing being a Muay Thai? I know for myself, I'm not the great, I, I really did not adapt well to kickboxing because yeah. I, I, I like to catch kicks and yeah. like, uh, when, I, when I feel like I do something wrong or I get off balance, I'll look to grab in the clinch just to like kind of reset myself. Uh -huh. Whereas kickboxing, you really don't have that uh, option. Yeah, I mean, kickboxing has always been an easy transition for me. You know, I've done kickboxing fights in the past and um, I wouldn't say I even adjusted that much as far as training goes. You know, I, I probably upped my um, combinations and, and numbers output, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, because that's really what they're looking for as far as scoring goes and, and you know, getting the win goes. But um, that's kind of my style anyway. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fast combination fighter. A lot, a lot of, there's a lot coming at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, not just this one, two, uh, hard, hard, Muay Thai traditional thing, you know, it's kind of a hybrid style, you know. Uh, some people call it more of a Dutch style, which I particularly don't like, and I don't like people to say that about me <laughs> at all, because um, I don't think I have that. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little more um, numbers based, you know, so you just up your output. But, you know, that's kind of my thing anyway, putting pressure on people, put, um, you know, putting, putting things together. And uh, so it's not a big, adjustment for me to go from Muay Thai to uh, kickboxing. I kind of like how you said that, that you don't want to be uh, considered like a Dutch kickboxing because to me I think like the, the hands of Dutch kickboxing is not the same as like a Western boxing. Yeah. It's a lot more uh, power shots, not as many like, you know, jabs and you won't see a lot of shovel jabs and mm -hmm. stuff like that that uh, I think is more prevalent in Western boxing. Which to me, I like, I, I did, you know, boxing as well. I love Western boxing and trying to put those combinations together. Yeah, and kicks. that's what I feel like I try to do is, is put more of a Western boxing in with the traditional Muay Thai as opposed to Dutch style. You yeah. know what I mean? I think you're more of like, yeah, because when you're fighting, you're, you're long and you're putting your combinations together to kicks. Whereas, you know, the Dutch, that a lot of them, they're going to stand right in front of each other mm -hmm. in the pocket and... Right, which you can't do in Muay Thai because you're no. going to get <laughs> crushed. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I, I like to think I have kind of my own style and um, it works well in, in both sports. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a big adjustment for me to, to, to change the rule setup. So back on to the personal stuff here. So there's guys, you know, obviously it's not, you know, Muay Thai is all respect. It's not like calling people out. But is there people yeah. out there that you haven't fought yet that you respect their game? You're like, man, I think that would be a, a hell of a fight, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Harrison and I have always talked about fighting for a long time. Um, he went up in weight. You know, he used to fight down at uh, 140, which is where I've been my whole career, basically. I mean, I fought all over the place, but that was more along the lines of just getting fights. You know, yeah, when you if you're fighting fights. like a high level fight, you want to be at your... Yeah, that, I mean, it, it's a lot tougher um, giving up weight when there's, a, uh, once the skill level is way up there. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're fighting in smokers or amateur or even low level pro, yeah, I'll fight a guy that's like 20, 30 pounds heavier than me. I don't care, you know, yeah. like, I'm gonna do it. But but the higher up in skill you get, the, those numbers uh, become Really, really rough. You know, you, you see, like even even in uh, Thailand, like they won't give up even like a pound or two, mm. um, for the most part. So, um, you know, Harrison, he's he's. Uh, we always talked about fighting, but who knows if that'll ever happen? Not only just weight issues, but now promotional issues and yeah. things like that. And, and it just never lined up. But that would always be a, a good one. Uh, I've always wanted to fight Pacorn. Um, he's an amazing fighter. I just. I just want to have fights with guys who I like to watch fight. You know, yeah. I don't want to fight somebody who I look at and I'm like, I would never watch this guy's fight ever. You know, and I fought <laughs> people like that. I'm like, and it's it to me, it's boring because it's like I'm in there. I'm I'm watching it too. Like I'm watching mm -hmm. what's going on. I'm thinking what it looks like on the outside. Like I want it to be exciting, and yeah. I need an exciting fighter uh, to bring out that in me. If I got right. someone that's just just standing there and, and being boring, or and wants to point you, <laughs> right, right, it, it becomes boring and. You know, maybe that's uh, not the best way to, to fight, but but at this stage in my career, and always really, I, I want to put on really great fights, and, and I want to fight great, exciting fighters as well. So anyone that, that I like to watch fight, or people like I want to fight, 
and it has nothing to do with, um, I want to call this person out because I think I can beat them. I'm like, no, I want to call, I want to call this person out because that'll be a great fight. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Course, it's like, yeah. this will be great to watch. This is a fight I'll be able to go back and be proud of and be like, I want to watch this. And, you know, usually I hate watching my fights, mm. but I don't ever want to look at a fight of mine and be like, that's so boring and awful. I can't believe people say this is good. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's, that's not something I want to look back on my career and have, which, and fortunately I have very few of those, <laughs> very few. So, uh, another thing, so we're talking about, you know, fights you'd like to have, future. What are your goals now that you've, you've gotten, you know, a world title, everybody's goal, you know, world title. You've put on very exciting fights. What is something, before you step away from fighting, I want to do this, <laughs> I want to do that. Uh, there's, some, there's, there's some things you haven't done yet that you want to do. Um, I've never actually had that. <laughs> Funny enough, uh, from day one, I've never really had these goals as like belts or, or things like titles and things like that as, as what I'm looking to aspire to. From the get-go, it's always been, I wanna get better. I wanna fight better people every time. I wanna have better fights every time. I wanna have exciting fights every time. So I'm constantly looking to push that envelope as far as uh, skill goes and excitement goes, the yeah. excitement factor and, and the, in having memorable fights, you know, the fights right. that people talk about. When you're talking about belts and trophies and things like that, it's just such, it's such a separate piece. It's just yeah. a piece to, to what you did in there. And to me, if that's your goal, anybody can go out and win, win a title. Anybody can go out and win a fight. But mm -hmm. what, what did you do in there? Right. And that's what's important to me. And that's what's always been important to me from the get-go. So I've never really had those kind of goals that I think uh, a lot of people, even like a world title, um, was never something I was like, I, I have to do this. Uh, it's got to be, you know, before I retire, I need to win this world title. I don't really care. I mean, you can throw all my belts away. I don't, <laughs> I don't really want them. But the fights that I've had is what I'm going to go away with, you know, it, you know, when, when you I'm see like, it, uh, You seem like someone that takes, you know, each fight as that. You take, I'm fighting this guy. Yeah. I don't care about if it lines me up for this next fight, I don't right, care. Right. Take, but you see a lot of guys are like, if I win like these next two fights, man, it's gonna put me in line to fight, you know, here. Or if yeah. I win three more on this low level show, I can fight in the, the big, you know, like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, People it's, it's, like, it's definitely looking at it as a- Right, uh, it's good thing. to have that kind of uh, motivation, but I don't think that should be your goal. You're, you gotta take it one at a time because you don't know what's gonna happen anyway. You might go out there and be like, oh, I need to play it safe or fight this way. And if I do, I'm gonna win and then get this next fight. And then you just have these awful, awful fights and nobody cares about, you know? And, and again, when you look back on somebody's career, it's not about a title. It's not about, it's not usually about one fight or another fight. It's how they perform throughout. Like, how what, what they went out there what they put on the line when they when they got in the ring you know and for me at least you know those are the people i look up to you know the the fighters i look up to is it, i don't care about their wins and their losses i don't even know what their wins and their losses were mm -hmm. most of the time i'll watch their fights i'll turn it off before at least i see a decision because i don't really care like i'm not like watching it that what these judges say isn't going to impact how i felt about that fight not at, not at all you know what I mean? It's like well, go on, you go online, watch all these old tie fights. Do you stick around and look at what the decision was if there no. was one? No. Like, who cares? That was a great fight, right? So right. What's, what is really the point? And I think sometimes we get too focused on that. Uh, and that, I think that's one thing that's great about Muay Thai or traditional Muay Thai is the wins and the losses are going to come. They know that. They don't, they don't dwell on it. I mean, they make fun of each other when they get knocked out. And it's like, well, yeah. whatever. It's going to happen. It's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to me. But we make it this thing, like, like just so awful. And, like, it, that, like, if I lose, I'm, like, a bad person or, you know, I should be ashamed of myself. It's like, no, you went out there. You put it on the line. Learn what you can from it. Go to the next one. Go yeah. to the next one. Put it on it. And, and, and I think that's also what keeps a lot of people from get in as many fights as they should is because they're trying to handpick the ones that are going to make them look the best as yeah. opposed to the ones that are going to improve them as a fighter and what's really the goal in here why are we doing all this why are we killing ourselves in the gym why are we going in there in the ring and risking our lives it's like because i want to get better i don't want to just say i was this guy i'm like hey look at me i beat these people <laughs> you know what's the point of that and you know it's, yeah. you know it's uh stupid i think maybe but maybe, <laughs> maybe i'm wrong i don't uh, know so end of the day when uh 
you hang up the gloves, you're sticking around, you're gonna be, <laughs> you're gonna coach, you're gonna, yeah. do you have a, do you have, I know you probably don't even think about it, but do, do you wanna have your own gym? Do you wanna like, you know, grow your own stable, your own like line of? I have, uh, I have very mixed feelings about it. I'm definitely always gonna be in it. You know, I'll always wanna um, kind of pass on the knowledge I've had and help people out and, you know, improve fighters that are out there. As far as having my own gym, I don't think that's a, ever something I would ever really want to do. If I did, it would be a very small, very traditional Muay Thai gym, like in a basement somewhere. You know, I don't, I don't want to really get into that business side of oh, the sport man. because oh. it's going to make me hate it, right? <laughs> and it's the same thing with like, like promoting fights and things like that. Like, yeah, I'd like to help out and be like, maybe help match make people and be like, mm -hmm. this would be a great fight, but I don't want to get into that. You don't want to take on all the, the weight as a gym owner, businessman, no. a promoter, businessman, no. all that. Like, you want to be in the sport, but not like. I want to be in the sport because <laughs> I love it. I don't yeah. want to be in it for the, all these reasons that are going to make me hate it. Like, yeah. I get why most promoters are not the greatest people and you don't want to deal with them. I get why a lot of gym owners are the same way because you get, get, uh, Guys that don't turn in their medicals for shows, people whose credit cards bounce. Yeah, it turns you, know, you know, it turns you bitter, and I get it. You know, <laughs> I understand why promoters are that way. Like I'm like, I know, I know, you got to deal with all these idiots. I, I'm not one of them, but yeah. I know the majority of the people you have to deal with. You just you just want to like burn the whole place down, <laughs> and and that's why you like maybe don't treat treat most fighters right, or you know try to take advantage of them. Yeah, because like, because you just become a um, it hardens you to, to the yeah. sport, you know, and I don't ever want to do that. So I, I do want to stay in it forever and uh, find a way to do that. Maybe uh, um, run a program at a gym as yeah. opposed to owning a gym and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, I don't ever see myself. I think that's a thing it. that really needs, uh, that, that would be really good for Muay Thai is that a lot of the fighters, when they're done, that are legit guys, you gotta come back, you know? Like, well, I'm not, you don't have to be yeah. the best fighter, but someone that knows the sport, you know, like, I look at, um, you know, Justin Griskowitz, uh, he referees, I think <laughs> mm -hmm. that's good. A guy yeah. knows Muay Thai. Uh, you see, like, Stefan Strotmeyer and uh, over there in that area, the East Coast guys, he, he knows what he's doing, like, Kansak, all these guys. Yeah. That's good. We yeah. need the people like that, because you really can't challenge it like you can yeah. go into an IKF show in California, <laughs> where you got, like, right. Karate Bob, <laughs> just gave it 3027 and the other guy gave it 3027 for the other person yeah wow, that's impossible yeah it's, i think it's very important for um the people in the sport now the people that came up before us uh fighting regardless of the level um to to, to continue to be in the sport and to help it grow in in the way it needs to because if if all all the right people leave there are going to be people, people that take over and it's probably going to be the ones that don't have the best knowledge. You know, even if they have the best intentions, um, they might not have the, the best knowledge as far as w where it's going, what it should be. And uh, so, so the more of us that can kind of be in it, stay in it, help it grow, pass it on in some form or another, whether it's teaching, refereeing, um, judging, that kind of thing, uh, you know, the better. So the more of us that can do it, the, the better it will be for the next generation, the one after that, because we're continually either raising the bar or dropping the bar. And I've always wanted to raise the bar. And that's why I've, I've always fought the people I did and like put myself out there the way I did. And because I wanted it to be better for the next generation. I wanted to go out there and show what you can do um, if you put it all out there and put it on the line. I, I didn't want to go out there and kind of half, halfway do it. Yeah. And, and then the people will be like, well, that's what to aspire to, which they probably won't get there. So they're going to halfway, halfway, halfway. And then it just drops, 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 drops. Where like when we were coming up, it's like the well, only people we even had to look at were like the highest of the high. You know, it was, this yeah. was before YouTube and all that where Instagram or you can go <laughs> watch some guy in his garage. So our level was so high. It's like, I'm never gonna get there, so I have to kill myself even to get close. I have, I have to do everything I can, everything in my power to get to that level, but now it, it's kind of got diluted and it's mm -hmm. kind of sad, you know, you, you, it, there's so much good that comes with social media and, and that kind of thing, but there's so much bad too. So the more good we can put out there, I think the better it will be. You hear that? You fighters and coaches, <laughs> man, give back, pass it on. I think that's what <laughs> Muay Thai is about anyway. Like my enjoyment in having a gym is passing it on and seeing my students do the good stuff, the right stuff. You know, I, I get mad at them for their Instagram posts, but you know, if it's good, it's good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. Uh, lastly, before we get out of here, 
want to thank Kevin for coming out here. He's teaching a seminar here in about 20 or 30 minutes. He's got over 100 people here. Uh, it's going to be awesome. One of the before you take off, man, who, who do you got to, is there anybody that you just like, if it wasn't for this guy, man, I wouldn't be here. This is like the guy, give some shout outs. Jeez, man. Too many. But. There's so many. You know, obviously Gina's here with me. Um, I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. You know, it's funny, like people, people kind of talk like, well, she wouldn't be where she's at if it wasn't for you, but I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for her. Like she's the one that motivated me to, stop drinking, want to do something with my life. You know, I happened to get into Muay Thai and then she kind of followed along after and then she got into it too. So it, w it was something that kind of saved both of our lives and, and um, gave us so many opportunities to do so many things. Um, so yeah, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. But the know. list is endless when it, you talk about people to, to give shout outs to. And I like, think one of the things that you have that a lot of uh, Muay Thai people in the US don't have is like a, uh, a camp, like a true camp. I mean, like Muay yeah. Thai camps have their camps because they have so many people, endless knowledge. You got people at your gym that people don't even know that are good and you yeah. guys have a lot of good people y'all can mix it up with. Yeah. And then you got good coaches. I mean, that's awesome. A yeah. lot of people have to go somewhere. They have to leave the town. Yeah. They have to go to fly somewhere. There's people I know that uh, come from my gym that've flown out to CSA or they've gone to uh, Eric Haycrafts or yeah. something like that. That's that's a uh, man. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's the thing. You know, people you forget how little there is out there little you know there, there's very few places that are good and legit you know people hit me up all the time like what, what should i do and the real question is well how bad do you want to do this how bad do you want to get better if this is the most important thing in, in your life and what you want to do more than anything yeah you gotta you gotta leave <laughs> and whether that's going to a different place in the states that's better or, go, or going all the way over to a, to that's, a different country that's Thailand. exactly right man. i mean that's what i had to do that's, that's what, what we I had did, to do yeah. so you know it's like people like to say they want to do this but they don't really want to do it that, they don't want to do what it takes if you did you could so I know there's bad information out there. I know people live in places where there just isn't any options and you have to train at a bad school. But take it for what it is, get what you can out of it. But if you ever do want to improve, you have to make those sacrifices. Yep. And that's with anything. So if you really want to do it, there's ways to do it. But you got to be willing to put in the work and sacrifice. With that, we could go on forever on that, but that <laughs> is basically what you got to do, man. Don't put everything. I sold all my furniture. <laughs> I, went, I had some real fur. I had a pool table. I was living large, man. I had to toss it off to go to Thailand. Uh, Kevin, thanks for coming out here, man. My pleasure, I know you're man. Gonna, Thank you. No, you're gonna kill this uh, seminar, man. I think Houston. People don't know, man. Christine, you may think about bringing a lion fight yeah. down here, man. We've Houston's got, huge, man. Houston. I'm always, I'm always <laughs> impressed by how how big it is out here. Uh, but yeah, man, he's got to have a seminar today with uh, Gina Carano. And uh, guys, thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.